Um, hello all, this is Mr. Lucid LJ here, back with another audio commentary for you guys today. <clears throat> it's been a while since my last one. Um, I've just not been too interested in wrestling these days, but I um, thought I'd come up here and um, do a video response to the X Men. He put up a video there, I think it was a couple of days ago, about um, is Dolph Ziggler in 2014, is this his year basically, uh, and the cream will always rise to the top. And, uh, you know, I watched your video. Um, to be honest, I didn't really agree with any of your points and stuff, but, um, you know, we had a bit of a back and forth in the comments there, so I thought it'd be good to kind of do a video response towards what he said in the video, like kind of break down the video first and then kind of talk about my own personal opinion and stuff about Dolph Ziggler. So, uh, the first point, um, you know, we've seen how Ziggler was booked earlier on in the year. He was kind of booked as this uh, semi-legit main event guy, you know, for the World Heavyweight title. Now, <clears throat> it is good that he got that opportunity again to go for the World Heavyweight title and all that, but the only thing is that um, we all know that the World Heavyweight title is kind of uh, the second-rate title, and uh, definitely in the past two or three years, it's really been pushed as kind of a mid-card title at this stage, so I don't know how legitimate you kind of want to say the title is, but I think it's really given to guys who they think, well... He might be good, but if he doesn't perform there, we're not going to give him the WWE title. So I think that's kind of a, a testing ground for most guys. Um, you know, you're mentioning about the title reigns he already had. His first title reign was complete garbage. It was 11 minutes against Edge, and then he lost it back. I mean, I, I just don't understand that kind of booking where you give a guy an opportunity to maybe prove himself by winning the title. And then you just take it away from him on the same show. I think it's just kind of crazy. Um, you know, I think the second one was just more down, uh, unlucky circumstance and stuff. I mean, he got a really great crowd reaction and stuff. Um, he got a really good pop and stuff. But, I mean, to be honest, it was unlucky he got a concussion, really. I, I mean, you can't really say too much about that. But I just think the way that they used him then wasn't the best. So... I mean, you could have done some sort of an angle where, you know, he got the concussion, he was injured. Maybe they do a tournament for the World Heavyweight title, have four guys or something compete in a little tournament for the title, like they did a couple of years ago with uh, the WWE title. Um, and then maybe when he comes back, um, obviously he comes back face, you've got probably Langston and AJ still around with him, but basically they're saying, oh, well, you're no good. You know, putting him down constantly and, you know, he eventually breaks off from them, has a mini feud and then maybe you build up to whoever, whoever the world champion, whoever won the world championship in the tournament against Dolph Ziggler, who's saying he is the real world champion. So similar enough to what Punk did a few years ago, but I think it would have made him a lot more legit and stuff. Um, I really think he's lost a lot of credibility. Um, and lost a lot of legitimacy by being booked this way. Um, I mean, the same can go for the second point, really, as well. Um, in, in 2012, when he actually won the Money Bank, kind of a bit of a random one again, like the year before. It just came, came out at random. And then he was constantly losing matches yet again. It's like the curse of the heel losing matches once you win the Money in the Bank. So I don't know what the problem is with WWE doing that constantly, but... Um, I thought that lost a lot of credibility for him losing matches. And then when he eventually cashes in, he, um, you know, I, I don't know. It just, it's, it's like a weird thing. It just, you're taken away from, like, the guy, like, why book him where he's losing matches? Wouldn't you want to have him book strongly where he's beating guys that are half decent and stuff? Or, you know, I mean, he bet Cena, but it wasn't like a clean pin against Cena. You know, you want some sort of credibility if you're going to build this guy up as the next world heavyweight champion. So I just wanted to see a bit more legitimacy and, um, you know, just be built upright. Um, so that's a, that, that's a big problem anyway. But um, not only that, then you have him from main event and then... Gradually over the year, he has two rematches against El Rio. He has a match where he loses the title, and then he has a rematch where he loses. Then he has a mini feud with Langston, and then he goes to like, you know, opening ma opening matches or mid card matches, losing to Ambrose and a few other guys, and then you know have him go to a pre show, and then just. 
the past couple of pay-per-views, bar the last one, he wasn't even on the show. So it's like, when has that ever happened in wrestling where you go from main event to, like, pre-show, mid-card, no respect? So, I mean, this isn't me doing this. This is WWE booking it. So you can't really say, well, you know, da-da-da-da-da-da-da, because this is what WWE have done. You can't really defend that point at all. It's like... When when has this ever happened? What, right, so Hogan in the mid to late nineties goes from main event god superstar. Yeah, he was obviously over pushing stuff, but goes from main event and then just gets booked to mid card, low mid card, and not even get on pay per views. I mean, that just doesn't make sense in my eyes. So, and even if this ever has happened in wrestling in the past thirty years, it's not been a a positive for someone's career. It's always been a negative. If they're going to get booked from main event to mid card, when has it ever been a positive? Example, Miz was the main event two or three years ago, and now look where he is, just a mid card languishing. And you just think, well, is that going to happen to Ziggler now? Because it, obviously it's happened to a number of guys over the past few years. It's happened to Ziggler, Miz, um, I'm trying to think of other guys, Christian maybe as well, Punk, Brian. You know, the go from like this, you know, main event push to all of a sudden they're in the mid card, and it's like, how are you supposed to take them seriously? Like, where it's like, it's like putting like GSP on the main show and then as the champion, and then he loses the title. All right, if it was a if it was a real fight, fair enough, he loses, and then you just put him on pre-show, not even putting him on this show anymore even though he's, like, one of the best fighters in that division. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, how is that going to have any positives whatsoever? So, uh, you know, booking him is a big issue for me, I think. So, um, you know, another thing with Ziggler, I think the guy probably runs his mouth a little bit too much outside WWE, and, you know, maybe this is why... It's attributed, I'm not saying this is the main factor, but it's definitely attributed to the fact that he's been deep pushed and stuff over the past year or so. Um, you know, I think, I mean, the thing, I listened to an interview with Edge and uh, Jericho, and Edge even said, when you're coming up or if you've been there a while, until you've actually made it to that main event spot where you have your spot as a main event guy, I think you pretty much have to keep your mouth shut and not be running your mouth. You can think it to yourself and keep it to yourself, but... Having it publicly said uh, on radio shows and interviews and stuff where the WWE and John Cena and other people are going to see it, it's not really a good idea. Like, he's run his mouth about the top two guys, Cena and Orton, and I'm not saying that I don't agree with him. I 100% agree with him. I think it's the same two guys who've been on top for fucking 10 years nearly, which is kind of a joke, really, if you look at it. Orton's been on 10 years in the summer, and then Cena's been on 9 years at WrestleMania. Like, so... I'm not disagreeing with the guy, but until you get that main event status, I think, you know, you can't just be running your mouth where it's like you're going to cause yourself a lot of hassle and problems. So um, the next point I wanted to make was that um, eight months ago in a video, I was just checking some of your videos just to make sure I wasn't making shit up. But, you know, uh, after Ziggler um, won the title, you know, you were saying like it probably should have been at Mania or whatever, but... That doesn't matter as long as they don't fuck him up and, you know, screw up the push or the booking and stuff, you'll be happy. So eight months ago, you were really excited that Ziggler was the main event, world champion. You even said in your video he's one of the best in-ring performers, better than Daniel Bryan, better than CM Punk. And the thing is, to me, it's like, why do you not want him in the same spot in 2014 when he's been booked like garbage for the past eight months? Why do you not want him to reascend to that spot again? Why do you just want him to kind of wait two years and then reascend to that spot? I mean, the thing is, if you if you wait two years, you're going to have him, and he's going to be really old. He's going to be like 35, 36. And then you want to re-push him in his mid-30s. It's kind of crazy. Like, I mean, the thing is, you know, I... I don't know, I think that he's kind of screwed. I think he might be stuck in mid card for a good while, you know? But it's like, why are you wanting to settle for less? As a wrestling fan, you should be wanting more. You shouldn't be saying, well, you know, I accept the fact that 
he's not going to be near the title scene or anything like that in 2014, but why are you accepting less as a wrestling fan? I just don't understand that logic. It's like, well, if he's one of your top three or four favorite guys in the company, why do you not want him to be, you know, one of the top guys? You know, maybe maybe your expectations could be unrealistic, maybe, but it's like, why as a fan would you want to settle for less on a guy? It, it, that just doesn't make sense. It's like... I, I just don't get that. It's like, if Austin, oh, well, I mean, Austin in 2000, I mean, you know, if he's just doing a few good segments and stuff, I mean, this is what you said. You said, um, you only care if he's doing good segments and good TV. Um, you know, why are you settling for second rate? Like, I just don't understand that. And the thing is, what has he done in the past four or five months since around SummerSlam? to indicate that this is the direction he'll be going for 2014. Will he be going in the direction where he'll be doing good segments and good TV? I think he's just been stuck in mid-card and losing matches, winning matches, no angles, no fuse, no nothing. So really since Biggie Langston, and that that's like five months ago. So I don't know where you're getting this notion that, oh, well, all of a sudden he's going to start doing good TV. Well, if he's not getting booked to do good TV, how will he be doing good TV? So, um, what else have we got here? Um, you said about, oh yeah, the company uh, realizing about, um, you know, what they have at the moment in Dolph Ziggler and all this kind of stuff. And, and oh, they realize now what they have in the guy and this, that and the other. The thing with that argument is it's totally invalid because if they realize that this guy was a main event guy or, you know, upper mid card, why isn't he being portrayed on TV as an upper mid card main event guy? This guy has been in the company for nearly 10 years. I think he came in maybe OVW in 2004 and then he did the Kerwin White gimmick in 2005, I think, and then he did the Spirit Squad gimmick and all that, but, you know, that's like eight or nine years ago, and then he's had this gimmick for like four and a half, well, actually five and a half years, so, uh, and currently being booked in mid-card, lower mid-card, so if you're saying that they have something in this guy, why hasn't he ascended to the top and stayed at the top, you know, that doesn't make any sense, and, you know, as we were debating and discussing in the comment section, that you're on about, oh, well, look at like guys like Brian and Punk, and he even said it in the video. Well, these guys were, you know, no one had faith in these guys, and, you know, they're at the top. Well, are they really at the top? Um, you look at Punk, for example, came in in 2005, was really on TV in late 2005, 2006. You know, he got that run in 2008 as champion, but... It does, it does seem like another thing with the World Heavyweight title, a transition just to see, oh, has this guy got anything? You know, did some good stuff in 2009 with Jeff Hardy, no doubt. Probably one of the best things in 2009 with Jeff. And then you don't really see him for another two years in the title scene. And then, you know, all of a sudden, you know, he cuts the promo, gets a lot of buzz around him. You know, fair play for him for doing that and stuff and uh, trying to get himself over, but when he actually was champion and getting booked, he wasn't getting booked as the main event. John Cena was still getting booked as the main event. And, you know, you look at him through the rest of 2013, I mean, you turned him heel, like, halfway through his title run, which was kind of crazy, too, especially when his DVD and stuff was coming out. And then, you know, you booked him as, like, this mid-card world champion when he wasn't getting every show as the main event champion because you want John Cena or Randy Orton to be the top guy. And it's just WWE politics all over. And then it's the exact same with Daniel Bryan. This guy was bought like complete shit when he was on NXT. He comes in, loses all his matches, and he still gets over, which is fair place to him. Does a decent mid-card run. Doesn't do jack shit. If you look at my Daniel Bryan history of Daniel Bryan video... And everyone disliked that because it was actual facts that was given. But because everyone loves Daniel Bryan, I like Daniel Bryan, but I think he's lost a lot of momentum in the past few, couple of years. So, And then, you know, you have him win the money in the bank, lose all his matches, then he's world champion for a bit, and then he doesn't do much again. Then he has 
you know, the team hell no. Then he's getting pushed to main event. It's like the the pattern of booking is just dreadful. It's not like no gradual progression from, you know, a lower card guy maybe to mid card if he's got potential. You know, maybe to open mid card, then maybe to main event. It's just randomly done. And to be honest, in the past four or five months, I think the booking of Daniel Bryan has been dreadful, pretty atrocious if you ask me. I mean, he kept getting beat down by the corporation and the Shield. He didn't get any just returns. I mean, he could have been the champion at this stage, but they wanted Orton as the champion and face of the company because it's best for business, even though Daniel Bryan is the most over guy in the company. So they've done everything to ruin him. You know, they've had him lose on pay-per-view. They've taken him away from the fucking main event scene now, and now they've put him to mid-card with the Wyatts, and it doesn't make any sense, and you're turning your top guy fucking heel. Like, this is what annoys me about WWE. It makes me have absolutely no faith in him whatsoever, you know? So, you look at these guys, Brian and Punk. They're probably top upper mid that what? That's what I would say they are. I don't think they're main eventers. I don't think WWE ever sees them as main eventers because they never book them as main eventers. They book them as these mid-card, upper mid-carders. And, you know, they try their best to do what they're given, but it's just like, well... Don't half arse do it. If you're going to go for it, go for it. You know, Brian's lost a lot of steam. And now if he's going to be turning heel or even associated with a heel mid-card faction, that's just going to take more steam away from him. And to be honest, it's just pure WWE politics and WWE bullshit. Pushing John Cena as the top guy. Pushing Randy Orton as the top guy. And, you know, it's, it just feels like nothing has changed with this company at all. So that's just the point about that anyway. Um, to wrap up the video in the next couple of minutes, um, you know, you said Ziggler could be a top three guy this era. I, I don't think he's definitely a top three guy. Um, you, maybe you want him to be a top three guy, but, you know, I don't think he is. I mean, you're on about, like, we have the same guys from the, the late 2000s who were still in the company in the mid-2000s, you know, and probably going to be there for another five years. Orton's not going to retire till he's about 40. Cena's probably not going to retire till he's 40, 45. So what's going to change until like 2017, 18, you know, unless they really want to change shit in the next year, what's going to change? I can't see anything changing. It hasn't changed in six, seven years. It's the same shit and it's progressively got worse. Um, you know, I mean, if you, if you wait till the late 2010s, right, and be optimistic, you're being very optimistic about Ziggler, um, you know, he's going to be like 40, and then you're saying, oh, well, let's wait two years until he's 36 and then push him as WWE champion. You know, what indication have you got that this is even going to happen? The way that WWE books people, the way that WWE treats guys, where, where, where is this going to happen? It's, it just seems really random to me. So I'm just looking at it from a realistic point of view. You might call it cynicism, you might call it pessimism, but... I just think it's realistic looking at the history of the, this company. Like, you know, um, you know, wait until 2016 to be booked um, as WWE champion. He's going to be 36. I mean, a lot of wrestlers these days, I think that they realize that, you know, if you make enough money in wrestling, you can pretty much retire at 40 to 45. You don't need to be a Hogan or a Flair who might be clinging on to the fame, the glory. I need to be wrestling into your late 50s, early 60s. So these guys realize, even Edge said it in his interview. He said that he knew he was going to retire around 40. He retired maybe a year or two earlier. He probably could have retired this year or just gone, like, you know, but because of what happened with his neck and stuff, he had to retire early. But the guy's made his money. He's doing acting now. So I think wrestlers realize, oh, well, you know, I don't really need to be around there until I'm 45, 50 now anymore, because it's like, well, if I've made my money, then, you know, I, I've made my career pretty much, you know, I've made a legacy, I've, I've you know, set the future. AJ, in, in the interview he done on uh, FOW, he says all he cares about is having a financial security for himself and his family, and he's probably dead right, you know, so... um just a big thing that we uh, argued on the comments and stuff as well. Um, you know, we were at, you were arguing about, oh, well, you know, these guys won titles in their mid-30s. But the thing is, you know, if you're pushing a person 
you can't just push them from main event to mid card and then push them back to main event when they're in their mid thirties. Like Ziggler's going to be thirty four this year. You know, he's not a spring chicken anymore. If you really wanted to do something, you probably should have done it in 2011 with Edge and stuff, but you decided not to book him like that. So that's not my fault. That's WWE's fault. You know? You can't just start booking people in their mid-30s as as champion and stuff. Um, You know? So anyone would tell you that. I mean, it has worked with a couple of people, but it's a very rare thing. So... um, Another thing you said, like, I mean, you're on about all the people that have endorsed him, like Austin and, you know, JR and whoever else has endorsed him over the past few years as a main event player and stuff. And like I said, if WWE really thought that, then he would be the main event guy and would stay the main event guy and not be de-pushed to the mid-card, you know? You said if that's the only thing holding him back from being main event, then what's the problem kind of the thing? And I'm just thinking, well, why would you think that anyway and why would you book someone to deliberately sabotage them to look crap you know and the thing uh, the thing about everything anyway at the end of the day is like it's it's all subjective it's all objective it's um you know opinion and stuff you know i just felt like you know saying that well if people endorse him then that trumps your opinion no, not really. I mean, these guys are in the wrestling business. They know more than me. I'm not going to say that they do, do uh, that. I know more than them. Obviously not. But just because a guy endorses another guy doesn't make their opinion more valid or my opinion less valid, you know. So, and just to finally wrap it up, I mean, this is probably like a 20, 25 minute video, but I just think it needed to be said. Um, um you know like i'll go through some of the positives with Dolph Ziggler and i'll go through the negatives with Dolph Ziggler um i think he's good in ring i don't think he's like the best of all time or anything but he's a fairly good in ring he's got good facials good expressions he's got a good look you know um a good look about him and then his selling is uh probably one of the best in the company so but then you look at his negatives his promos are still not up to scratch for main event for me. If you want to be a main event, you're going to have to have main event promos. I don't know if his gimmick is necessarily main event either, or his name. Um, you know, that could be a problem too. Um, overselling at times, it kind of gets a bit... It, he's a bit like Shawn Michaels, kind of oversells a little bit too much at times, which took away from Shawn Michaels a bit as well. Um, you know, talking, you know, shit and smack about WWE outside WWE is definitely a negative on him as a person, and it's not really helping his cause whatsoever. Um, I don't think he has that, you know, tough guy, legit, you know, presence about him. Um, You know, I don't think he's a guy, you know, you look at him and think, well, compare him to Austin, and Austin looks like a tough motherfucker, but does Dolph Ziggler, you know? Even comparing to anyone else, Brock or whoever, does he look like this tough guy who can beat you up? You know, you compare him to Shawn Michaels, and Shawn Michaels didn't have that aura about him as, as a tough guy, and that's probably one of the main reasons um, Shawn didn't draw in the mid '90s because you know people looked at him and only really girls and you know teens and stuff liked him. You know, guys weren't like, yeah, he's a good wrestler, he's good in ring, but his character's not like this character you can relate to as this badass motherfucker is going to kick kick everyone's ass and then, you know, like, just, like, legit tough guy, you know? So that's kind of a, uh, a problem. Um, his attire looks a bit shit at times. It looks a bit too pompous, too girly. That's a small gripe. It's nothing, you know, too big or whatever. Um, and then the last point would be uh, second rate. Uh, to other guys, it's kind of like a rip-off of like Sean, uh, Mr. Perfect, Billy Gorn, Rick Rude, all kind of combined into this new new thing, you know, and, and it, it, if they're going in a new direction with this gimmick, it kind of looks a bit like Val Venus, cheapy Rick Rude gimmick, so it's been done before, it just seems a little bit second-rate to me. Let Dolph Ziggler be Dolph Ziggler, you know, let the guy be who he is, on these interviews, because he, he actually sounds quite decent on these interviews, you know, just just change him up a little bit, you know, 
Like the Lex Men, you can't argue these points. These are legitimate facts. Uh, you know, the last part was opinions and stuff, but the rest of the video is just, um, it's objective truth, you know? They're facts and figures. I can get the facts and figures um, for, you know, how many pay-per-views he was on this year, his losing record this year, his losing record last year. And there's no really debate in it because it's like, you know, the guy the guy is just being bought like shit. And obviously in WWE's eyes, they don't think he's a main eventer. And I don't see any change whatsoever in 2014. I'll come back later on in the year and admit I'm wrong if I am wrong. But I hope you do the same. I hope you do a response to this video. It'd be appreciated. Um, you know, and uh, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'll come up and admit I'm wrong. Um, I'd hope you do the same and have a good, uh, you know, debate about this because I think it's, a, it's an interesting topic. So this is Mr. Lucid LJ. Peace, good luck, bye-bye.